we have to turn around and stop going and jumping in the mud. Amen? That's right. We have to stay out of the mud. Even though it's fun, it seems like you're going to get all gritty and you're going to get chafed and then you're going to be mad at yourself for jumping in the mud. Amen? Hallelujah. I've been all rambling now. So come on, come on. Oh, no, no, no. God. Hallelujah. That's right. We compare ourselves to God. We're nothing. But. Through the gift of grace, through the gift of life, through Jesus Christ, we get to be called children of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, glory to God. We get to put on that name tag, hallelujah, glory to God, and walk in all that the Father has given unto us. What has he given unto us? All things that pertain to life and godliness through Jesus Christ, glory to God. I told you it would preach, hallelujah, praise God, amen, glory to God. Thank God, hallelujah, praise God. Glory to God. Glory. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, I just got sitting there listening. I thought, well, we're, I know where he's got to go with this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know, we compare ourselves to others, and they got more money than we got, you know. You know, it's kind of funny, you know, if you were a Kennedy, and you look at the Kennedys, and you, you're going, well, I don't have all that. But the Kennedys got all that. If your last name was Kennedy, you had all that. You know what I'm saying? You know, when, when, when we are in the world, we look at God, and we look at all that God has and all that God is. But then we come into the family. Hallelujah. They were named by his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We become children of God. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say glory be to God forevermore? Glory. How to turn around and look at somebody and say, I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. God's life's in me. Come on now. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Father, we honor you. We magnify you. We bless your holy name. We give thanks unto you. For you are good and your mercy endures forever. We're called by his name. I said we're called by his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We become heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Children of God. Hallelujah. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Turn around, look at somebody. I don't care if they're man or woman. Hallelujah. Say, you're a son of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then you can be seated. Amen. Well, we ordered the, uh, the keyboards last week. And they were here on Wednesday. Ordered them on Sunday. They got here Wednesday. Glory to God. Uh, praise God. We're excited about having them. And uh, there's just some stuff that can be done with them that we can't do otherwise. Like right now, this is a whole lot better than trying to fill with a guitar. You know, fill, fill music uh, is better on the piano. It just it just does a lot of stuff. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're, we're glad to see you this morning. Don't forget our Wednesday night Bible study. We're teaching on the authority of the believer. And uh, we are in, we just finished lesson eight, and uh, so we're moving into our ninth lesson next week. Hallelujah! And uh, we're learning some good stuff there. Glory to God! Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah! And uh, you know, God is good to us. We're not we're not we're not staying still. We're moving forward. Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah! Praise God! It's time to give this morning. If you know, I've gone below. Please signify to raise your hand. The usher will be glad to assist you. Uh, if you give with square cash, if you're giving with um, uh, PayPal, you can go ahead and, and send your electronic uh, offerings in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. You never, I never know when it's going to show up. I can hear my phone buzz in the middle of the night. You know, look over there, there. Somebody just sent their tithe or offering. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. If you have all you join us on Facebook today, we're glad to have you. And we trust you'll be blessed today with uh, what we're ministering. We're ministering on, Tim, on what to do when your faith seems weak and victory lost. And uh, so if you haven't been with us from the beginning, we, but this, is about the, uh, this is the third week of this. There's about 10 lessons here, uh, depending on how we go through them. Um, some of them may be longer, some of them may be shorter. Uh, you just never know with me and the Holy Ghost. Mostly the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Glory to God. We thank God that we're called, appointed and anointed. Our, our, our vision and our ministry is called to this city to 
reach this, this, this city and the area around us and to even to the uttermost parts of the earth. And uh, we've been to a lot of the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God ministry. And, and in those we haven't been, we've helped support those who did go. Glory to God. Amen. So we, we're, our, our mission is to reach everybody with Jesus. Amen. Praise God. All right. Y'all ready to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the time and offer that's, that's brought this morning. Those that have already sent electronically. Father, we thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto them. You pour out blessings on them. They don't have room enough to receive. They're blessed. Walk in the land of the living, the land of full supply and overflow. They walk, in the, they walk under the shadow of El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. We thank you, Father, that all their need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That you give them the power to get wealth that we may establish your covenant in the earth. We bless them. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, usher. Receive that into the kingdom. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Nathan and Dick got to practice yesterday for the first time in two years. <laughs> you know, that was exciting for them. Hallelujah. And I think they were working on a new song, and then and Nathan's writing. I think that maybe I'll write another new song. Okay. And then they, then they um. He, he was writing a song this week, so uh, we've got maybe a couple of new songs coming down the pipe here in a little while. Hallelujah. Huh? And Dick's writing one, about three or three. We've got a bunch of new songs coming down the pipe. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. All right, Children's Church Preschool, you guys are dismissed. Go to your class, Miss Janie. Janie had her um, had, had surgery again on um, Thursday. Went real well. She's recovering real quick. And... Um, She's here. So if you're just one of your kids, we can hear her this morning. She's back there, ready to go. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and get your Bibles out, if you will, and open them up to the first. Uh, you want to get a little theological? The first epistle general of the Apostle John to the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John's first, first letter. And we're looking at 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Also where the name of our church came from. And it says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Glory to God. Thank God we can overcome. We overcome. Can you say amen? amen. We're born to be overcomers. Amen. amen. And as we said in our opening on, on, on this teaching, there are times in our life that it just seems like your faith is weak and your victory has gone. You went to bed, you got up in the morning, it packed up and boogied. I mean, you're looking, you're looking at it, you know, it's like, it's like looking for the dog under the bed. You know, where are you? Come here, boy, come here, come here, come here. You know, it's gone on, it's gone on down the road. It didn't really. But you see, your feelings can lie to you. I said, your feelings can tell you one thing. You know, we're, we're physical, but we, we do have a physical aspect to our existence. You know, 2 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Paul prays that I pray your whole body, your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Three different Greek words, you know, uh, pneuma, suke, and soma. So they're all, and they all refer to different aspects of our existence. And we live in a physical world. We exist here in this physical world. We're operating in this physical world. And your, your flesh, I hate to tell you, sweetheart, it hadn't been redeemed. Yeah. It's got the promise of redemption. It's still mortal. It's still corruptible. When Jesus comes back, you'll get immortal, incorruptible body. Until then, you've got to keep it under. Amen. But it also has emotions that need to be uh, dealt with. Your, your, your suke needs, has emotions to get in there. Depression can come. Feeling, you know, left out. Feeling like, you know, things just aren't going great. Uh, you're not getting everything the way you thought it should be. And that's why we have to renew our mind to the Word of God. Yeah. The ingratitude word of save or restore makes sound your soul, your suke. Okay. So we have what we said, there's always times in life that you can, you can just go to a place and all of a sudden it just seems like you don't have any victory and you don't have any faith. Now, that's the devil operating in that realm of the soul and the body to put you down and to get you off course and to get you off task and to get you off focus of what produces victory in your life, which is God, his word, Amen. and living by faith. Amen. 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 And so what are you doing when faith seems weak and victory lost? Well, number one, we talked about uh, in a, two, a twofold uh, aspect. The first thing was recognize the source. In other words, recognize the source of your problem, where it comes from. 
And who, who's, where does it come from? El Diablo. The devil. Are you here? Satan. You know, as old Shambot used to call him, Slewfoot. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And he, they didn't even have a sign. He Slewfoot uh, moans and trembles at the sound of that name. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we, know, and then we talked about, so the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that they might have life. So we recognize two things. One is the source of your problem. And, and then we, we said this with a clarification. You can either uh, be, be, say be the source of your problem directly or indirectly. You can have a demonic oppression and be sick from demonic oppression, direct satanic oppression. Or you can just be sick because there's, it's in the world because of Satan. Yes. Okay? So just because you got a cold don't mean you got a devil, but he's behind it. Amen. Okay? So the source, the source of the problem is Satan. But the source of the answer is God. Yes. You gotta say, and you can't get those mixed up. Amen. You got a lot of people running around saying, you know, God made them sick to teach them a lesson. And it was really the devil, but then, they, then, then you go to a church where they're praying for the sick, laying hands on the sick, and they're of the devil. Say, so you know, woe be to those who call good evil and evil good. Okay, now, and then so last week we start talking about, uh, also be sure that the promises of God cover the things you're asking for. Amen. Don't be stupid. Now, see, here's what we did. Now, over in our charismatic word of faith circles, really particularly word of faith circles, we found out we could have what we say. Well, we took a part of a teaching and said, I can have what I say. Well, you can as long as what you say lines up with the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, you can have what you say that doesn't line up with the Bible, but you're going to get the consequences with it too. You know, the Bible says something very interesting in the Old Testament. It says, um, the Lord gives you the power to get wealth and adds no sorrow therewith. See, there are wealthy people out there that got a lot of sorrow because of the way they got it ill-gotten gain. But if it's the blessing of the Lord, it won't bring sorrow with it. You can go out there and start using and, and, and get things by working it and believing for it that aren't what God wants you to have. Amen. And it'll bring with it consequences of defeat and set you back. But when it comes from God, hallelujah, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Not just financially, it makes you rich spiritually. It makes you rich emotionally. It makes you rich uh, and, 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 your, and your walk with God. It makes you rich in every arena of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So just make sure you got promises from God. Amen. Uh, if, you want the, if you want to walk in the blessings of God on, on this side of heaven and want, to, and want to be blessing, let's make sure we got scripture that covers it. That's right. Stop going to the Lord and saying, Lord, bless this mess. What do you mean by that? You come up with a plan and you bring it to him to get it blessed. Just go get his. Yeah. It's already blessed. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Get what God's already given you. It's already blessed. Amen? Right. Okay. So that that's, brings us up today. Now this week we're going to talk about, and I know this is always everybody's favorite subject, but let, let's just stay with me until we get, get through this because we'll, we'll turn it so it's not that it sound as negative as what we're about to say. Uh, be sure you're not living in sin. Well, it just got holy quiet. I mean, holy quiet. I mean, there's a holy, holy hush in here. I don't think it's because of the presence of God. You don't like the subject. Well, we have to, we have to understand that, that sin is not, this isn't a condemnation point. Oh, you dog, sorry, sinner, you're going to burn and go to hell. That's not what we're talking about. The fact that sin separates, sin condemns your own heart, sin will bring um, lack of confidence between you and the Father from your own heart. Now, we don't overcome that by telling people uh, it doesn't matter because God's forgiven you, so you just go ahead and live any way you want to live. That's not, that's not, that is not overcoming sin consciousness. Because sin consciousness will be there if you're living in sin. Right. Telling people to ignore it doesn't deliver them. It won't. Deal with it. We deal with it though by going to the throne of grace. Amen. We deal with it by acknowledging it before the Father and have letting his cleansing power. What did we say a few weeks ago? That when, when we acknowledge, when we go to the throne of grace to get, to acknowledge we have sinned against God. Because our heart is condemning us, we there receive 
the cleansing of the blood in our consciousness. It's not as much as God's imputing it against you or holding it against you. It is your conscience has been tainted by it. And the blood of Jesus purges your conscience from the dead work. So what? You can serve the living God. First John chapter uh, 3, verse 21 and 22 says, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, not if God condemns us not, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. And listen to this. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. You see, you just can't jump in here and take verse 22 out and go, whatever we ask, we receive of him. There's an and in there. It's a conjunction. It's tied to something else. What? The lack of a condemning heart. Now, we've come along with a new narrative in the church and said that grace, you know, grace means that we're covered. It doesn't matter. Grace, 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 grace. In, in an extreme manner and in an extreme measure that people are going out and, and, and living in sin, drinking, smoking, doing anything they want to do, and going, it doesn't matter. Now, listen, I understand if you've got a problem and you're dealing with something you're working to overcome and your heart's condemning you and you feel, and if you feel bad, well, that's because your heart's condemning you. It's not the Father condemning you. The Father is saying, come to the throne of grace. The Father says, come in that state and let me, what? Cleanse your conscience from that. Purge your conscience from that so you can serve me. Because your heart's keeping, me, keeping you away from me. Your own heart is pushing you away from me. But telling people to embellish that and to live there and to stay there because they're under grace is not what's going to get the cleansing of the blood in their conscience. Amen. Which is what they need. Why? Because they no longer have confidence toward God. That sin robs them of their confidence towards God. Amen. And if our heart condemn us not, we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive. Amen. Hello. Amen. Do you understand? This is vitally important to understand. It is not a matter for the believer that we're making you, we're trying to make you feel bad and telling you you're going, you're, you're sorry, dog, you're gonna burn in hell. You just ain't worth nothing. You're just a low life because you went out and sinned. No. It robs you of your confidence toward God. That sin will rob you. And I can tell you, you can try to put the salve of the narrative of fake grace all over stuff. And your heart's still going to be doing it because what? You haven't gone to the true throne of grace and received that which you need to cleanse your conscience so you can serve the living God. Amen. It is your conscience that needs the cleansing. Amen. That will empower you with what? Confidence towards God. Amen. And in that confidence towards God, you can stand in faith and believe and receive. So if, you're, if your faith is weak and your victory is lost, check up and, and see. And just really, you don't have to check real far. Amen. Right. Amen. You, go off. you really don't. Amen. Well, I listen to so-and-so. He told me I don't need to repent. I just, you know, think just because just I'm under grace, it don't matter. Amen. No. Amen. Hey, give, do me a favor. Don't try this. Just go do it. Go to the Father and say, you know, I sinned. Forgive me. Cleanse my conscience with the blood and see how much better you are. Yeah. I'll guarantee you you'll be better. Then walk around ignoring it saying, you know, well, that's, that's sin consciousness for me to acknowledge that I've been living in sin. That's stupid on steroids. SOS. Okay? No, no. It, it is a robber. It is a robber. But God made provision when the robber comes. When the thief comes into your life through sin and through, through activity and things that are, that are wrong that cause your heart to be condemned and your conscience to bear the weight of displeasing the Father, God said, come to my throne, my throne of grace and receive mercy and grace in the time of need to help. Amen. Glory to God. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. What's that mean? That when you come, you're not going to have a tribunal that they're going guilty, 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 guilty. When you come, the advocate stands. 
I said the advocate stands, hallelujah. The one who bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases and took our sin and took the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and nailed it to his cross. When we come, the advocate stands in our defense. The application of the blood to cleanse our conscience from those dead works so we can freely serve God without the weight and the, and, and the, and the heaviness of the, of the condemnation that our heart already has. Stop, preachers that are preaching this, stop trying to convince people their heart's not condemning them when it is. Tell them what to do with it. Yes. Tell them where to take it. Yes. Amen. You sell books, you sell tapes with that junk. Come on now. And you lock people into a scenario where they're not getting the freedom they need. Oh, I could go do all this and I'm free. Glory to God, because I'm under grace. No. Now, I, I'll have people who preach along those lines say, well, I don't preach that. Yeah, but they're doing it. And I know it because I've talked to them. And you try, to, you try to help them. No, I'm under grace. It don't matter. I can do whatever. I have somebody get on there and tell me I don't have to that time to give, obey, obey, go to church, submit, do it. Listen, all the things that the Bible tells you you're supposed to do, they said they don't have to do it because they're under grace. They were just talking about how free they were to be able to do whatever they wanted to do. Well, yeah, you can. You can do whatever you want to do and live in captivity and live in bondage and live defeated. I prefer, I prefer to live in victory. Amen. 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 And so, in, in this hour, when we look at this, you know, we go to the throne of grace. God says, God says, okay, your heart condemns you. If our heart condemns us, now we have confidence toward God. Well, how many would that see? What's, 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 what happens when you don't have confidence? Your faith seems weak and your victory seems lost. Amen. Faith is a confident assurance Amen. that what he said he would do, he'll do. Amen. Now, see, see the, the thesis here is if our heart condemns us not, we have confidence toward God, whatever we ask, we receive of him. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You know what it says there? Amen. In 1 John chapter 3, um, we receive him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Well, it's without faith it's impossible to please him. For they that come to God must believe that he is, and he's rewarded them that diligently seek him. What commandments? We've got people walking around saying the only commandment is to love people. Uh, Jesus said on, on the love commandment, he hinged all the law and the prophets. He didn't say we do away with all the law and the prophets. They're, they're based on the love. Yeah. Amen. That's right. If you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself, you, you will fulfill the laws of the commandments. Right. Right. But there are, still, there's, there are New Testament commandments. Amen. You know, they said, well, John said, this is his commandment. That's one of them. It's the major one. Right. But I'm telling you, there are other commandments in the New Testament. Don't yield your body as service of unrighteousness. That's a commandment. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, what we, we do is we recognize that if there's sin, and I'll tell you, if, if, and, and, and let, me, let me back up just a little bit here. A lot of Christians... Now, I, I, we've got the narrative of grace out there that they're trying to feed people to make them feel better, and, you know, and, and then they can just go ahead and be, you know, they're going to be free because they feel better. Because they, they're trying to convince them in a soulish realm. It's not spiritual. It's soulish. They're trying to convince them that, that it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter that they're living in sin with God, and they, they can feel good about it because they're already covered in grace. But really, as we said before, the grace is God's made a provision to purge the conscience from the dead work so they can serve the living God. And he said, let, let's look over there. I'm, I'm quoting, I keep quoting it, but let's at least go there to Hebrews. I wonder, I wonder who, 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 who wrote the book of Hebrews. Yeah, I wish we had gotten that tape too. We had a, we, we did a, a number of years ago, we did a luau and we took a bunch of old songs and got them born again filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, 
We took Charlie Brown and turned him into the glory cloud. I see smoke in the auditorium. Glory cloud. Hallelujah. It's a howl. Hallelujah. That glory cloud. Amen. Look what he says here. Hebrews 4, 14. See, then we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, that's weaknesses, but in all points was tempted like we are. Let us therefore, why? Because Jesus came, Jesus defeated, Jesus overcame. But he says, let us therefore come. Stop, underline it, come. Come. Where? To the throne of grace. Grace isn't coming on you automatically in that sense. God's made provision, but you've got to come. To the throne of grace, what? That we may obtain mercy and find grace. I thought grace was finding me. You can find it. It's available. God has it. It's waiting for you. But you've got to come to the throne of grace that you'll find mercy and I mean, that you may obtain mercy and find grace when? In the time of need. When do you need it? When you don't have any confidence. When you've sinned. When, you're, when you've separated out of, in your own heart yourself from the confidence you can have with God, you are what? You are, you're in need. Amen. And he says, I love you as an advocate. See, this is, this is a beautiful thing. Paul writes, come to the throne of grace. John says there's an advocate. So when I get to the throne of grace, I find my advocate already there in court waiting on me. Hallelujah. And he's already got, he see, he's already been to the sidebar with the judge. Hallelujah. And they've already worked out the deal. That when you appear before the judge, they've already got the answer. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here? Glory to God. And I'm telling you, and the beautiful thing is, it's not, it's not a covered up. It's not a sentence that's covered up. It's, you know, um, what's the word they use? Um, when, when you get any, any record re removed, it's huh? a sponge. You see, when you get there, the deal, the plea deal is not this, that you're atoned, that you're going you're to have an atonement for a season. Your record gets sponged on the spot. It's like it never happened. And you can walk out of there, glory to God. Not that you came in lesser, of, 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 of the, having lesser amounts of the love of the Father. But you walk out of there with the confidence that your conscience has been cleansed from those dead works. Now you can go serve the living God. And you can ask God. And he'll give you what you ask for. Amen. Because your confidence is there. There's nothing hindering your faith. There's nothing standing in the, in the way of your faith. The conscientiousness has been washed. And that's a whole lot better preaching than I'm getting amen. I'm just going to tell you like it is. Praise God. When we understand this, and we understand, he said, let us come boldly. When you, listen. If you've gone to court for something, the lawyer calls you up and says, you already worked out the deal. All you've got to do is show up and here's what's going to happen. Amen. You can kind of come in. Yeah. I mean, you, can, you can come in and say, all you say, with a pimp. You come, come in pimping. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Remember, you said, you, back in the 70s, you had to have a pimp. Yeah. You had to have a certain walk. You had to do your hand a certain way. You had, you, I mean, you had that. And it was yours. You see? It's like a stroke now. It's a stroke now. Okay. Modern day, you got a stroke. Same thing. It's, it's your strat. It's the way you walk, the way you carry yourself that, 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 that says, hey, I, I, I got it. All right? When you know, he says, come boldly to the throne of Even when you sin, why? Because your advocate's already got the deal worked out. All you got to do is show up and receive. Amen. Receive. Receive. Not the sentence. But what the, what the court of high heaven has to offer you in regards to what you did. And what he has to offer you is mercy and grace. It's already, and 
The deal is sealed in the blood of the advocate. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. But he said, come. That you may obtain the mercy and find the grace. Don't keep living in it, lying down on the couch and going, Woo, I'm under the grace. Because really deep down your heart's going to keep condemning you. And it's going to hinder your faith. It's, it's, it's not that God's angry. It's that it's keeping you out of what he has for you. And it keeps your heart, and, and you live defeated. And you don't live to the fullness of what he has for you, the provision and the calling and, the, and, and all those things that he has for your life. He has so much for you. I said he has so much for you. So he's not condemning you. He doesn't need to. Your own heart does. And he's made a provision for that condemnation to liberate you. Because <laughs> he loves you. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you keep doing it because it don't matter. You're in the grace. I'm going to tell you get up from that place. Go to the throne of grace. Let, obtain the mercy and find the grace in this time of need that your conscience, your conscience be cleansed from the dead works so you can serve the living God. What? So then your heart can have confidence toward him. And you can receive whatever you ask of him, you can receive of him because you keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You'll be empowered to do those things when you go into the throne of grace. Amen. So I told you it wouldn't be as bad as you thought it was when I said keep sin out of your life. Amen. Amen. I know, I mean, going to classical Pentecostal, we'd leave church, we, we'd have to go outside and get the fire extinguisher out and put our clothes off, and turn, uh, put, the, put the fire out on our feet and stuff. Hell, and, and, and you'd have to go get them washed because you smell like brimstone. That'd bring the flames of hell up and the fire and brimstone get all over you. I mean, the, the soles of your feet, the rubber on them be smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Paul writes to the church. Actually, let me, let me stop here. 1 Peter 3, uh, chapter verses uh, 10 and 12 says, for he that will love life and seek good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips they speak no God. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Now, God, he's saying here that we need to pursue in God. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. I want his countenance of favor on my life. Okay? Amen? Romans chapter 6. Let's read. We're going to read the entire 6th chapter and quick there because that's about as far as we're going to be able to get. But listen, when, 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 when the, the Holy Ghost leads, whether it's in music or whatever, a certain direction, and it goes longer because that's what the Holy Ghost is doing, we do what the Holy Ghost does. Amen? Amen. Amen. We don't just, we, listen, I don't have an agenda. My agenda is the Holy Ghost agenda. Amen. Wherever he leads. Amen. Um, chapter um, 5 ends on verse 21 saying that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through, right, through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Now, that's my answer to some of the narrative I've heard. Don't tell people they can stay in sin, it's okay. And don't preach grace in a way that they can stay in sin, and it's okay. Sin is sin, but give them the answer. Amen? Give people the answer to the sin problem. If there's a, if there's a problem in their life with sin, give them the answer. Amen. Don't don't give them a, 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 a placebo. Right. We got we got a message called grace. You won't ever feel bad again as long as you live. Because no matter what you do, because you're under grace. You lying dog. I'm sorry. That's a lie. Amen. And you're lying to people. And you're putting them in the captivity and their bondage. Amen. And many times, not all the time, but many times, it's for the purpose of filthy lucre's sake. Because they'll listen to your ministry and make you big and you'll get a lot of books sold. And you'll get to appear on all the Christian television stations. And everybody's going to hear what you've got to say. Because they don't feel bad anymore. Yeah, and they do. Mm -hmm. Else John wouldn't have written to the church. 
If your heart condemn you not, then you have confidence toward God. There's going, some, there's going to be something that condemns your heart. And it's not God. If our heart condemns us not. Amen? No. So what should we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life or in a whole new plane altogether, another translation says, okay? Or a whole new sphere altogether. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, there's a lot of things the Bible says are so that we have to apply to our life by faith. God's not willing to any prayers. As a matter of fact, every sinner out there right now, their name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. If they don't receive Jesus, he gets blotted out. Hello? If they don't accept by faith the redemptive work of Christ, they will die and their name will be blotted out. And I can tell you that you may be raised up with him and seated with him, but if you don't act on and do like, he, like the word of God teaches, you, then you will, you will abdicate your ability to receive those things from God. Amen. Until what? You get to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Because your own heart's going to push you away from him. Knowing this, our old man is crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, or, um, uh, or the body of sin, my margin says, rendered inoperative. Oh, glory. In the power of the resurrection, when we walk with God, we can render the power of our body, the power of sin in our body, inoperative. Glory to God. Anybody ever had something inoperative? Yeah. Now, right now, let's keep these wrong. Now, we don't have it played through the sound system right now on purpose. Okay? But there are speakers on this. But you can press the function key and the uh, C sharp D7, I think it is, and it will turn the speakers off. We render them inoperative. And no matter how many times you've gone down these keyboards like this, no sound's going to come out. Until we come over here and we hit the, uh, the function key and hit this key. It's now operative. But God said that through Jesus Christ, we, we render the body of sin inoperative. It doesn't have the power to... Y'all get that? Yeah. Now, I'm playing, I was, hitting, I was doing the same thing on the keys. I was running my fingers up and down the keyboard. But there's speakers right now are rendered inoperative. Are you here? Amen. And um, where was, what verse was I in? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, the, the body of sin might be destroyed. Now, see, we got, see, he didn't destroy it. He rendered it inoperative. The body of sin might be rendered inoperative. In other words, it's power to control whether or not you live by, by faith, live with God, walk in righteousness, or walk in sin. It's a power to force you to do that has been rendered inoperative. And unless you turn it back on, it has no power over you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now you come up here and just sit up here and just bang on these keys all day long and they're going to sit right there. And that speaker's going to be inoperative. Now, we, now well, I, well, obviously we do it because we got to plug it into a mic jack to go through the house speakers when we want to play the, through the house because it sounds better and we don't want to have the, the bleed over from it. We have a reason for it. And God had a reason for rendering the body of sin inoperative. So you could live by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. So that you could live with confidence toward him. Amen. So this body of sin has been rendered inoperative. That what? That we should not be, we should not serve or be a slave. The, the margin says be a slave to sin. Sin is an evil taskmaster. It will hold you in captivity. <clears throat> it will hold you in bondage. But Jesus didn't. See, here's the thing. We have to remember. Now, I, listen, I've I got about 14 thoughts going through my head. I'm trying to grab the right one and hook onto it. Amen. And, and not sound like a babbling idiot in the process. Amen. Much of the past preaching of the church was so full of condemnation. 
and hellfire and brimstone, that that opens the door for some of these other narratives because what, you want to get from one ditch to the other ditch. And instead of just, get, you know, it doesn't do you any good for the tow truck to come and pull, snatch you out of one ditch and it throws you over in the other. We want to pull you out and get you on the road. Amen? Amen? Going from one ditch to the other, you, I mean, how many of you ever played golf? Yeah. Or in my case, played at it. <laughs> and you go from one side of the fairway in the rough over here to the other side of the fairway in the rough over there. Yeah. And then when you get close enough to the green, you're in one trap and you overshoot the green into the other trap. Yeah. And it don't do you a bit of good. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I mean, that's how I play golf. Well, I can crush it on a drive. Except I usually have a slice. 500 yards. 100 yards down the fairway, 400's out there. And you go there and you look for 30 minutes, you find the ball, and you, and you, and you knock the ball out of there, and you're over on the other side. To go from the condemnation preaching you know, God's angry with you, the sinners over, and the God's uh, sinners in the hands of an angry God, God's holding you out over everyone, drop you any second. To go from being come in every time you miss the mark by God, God's angry with you, God's ticked with you. And then, then run over here and get in the ditch where it don't matter to God, you can do whatever you want to do. We're just in another ditch. Amen. And all the while, God's trying to get you on the fairway. Amen. God's trying to get you in the middle. So you can live by faith and you can walk with confidence and so you can see the goal down there in front of you. I tell you, you can get on the rough, you can't even see the flag, the pin. Amen. So Too many trees in the way. Yeah. <laughs> when I play, I live there. Larry said he's been there. I live there. I'll never forget. I think the last time I played, maybe the next last time, the last time we had a picnic over at the Jamestown Park and then Alan was with us. And me and him went out and played golf that day, and, uh, and, and we had a cart, and, uh, you know, I was over in the rough, <laughs> shocker, and uh, he's, his cart, the cart's 10, 15 feet behind me. Oh, no. <laughs> no, he wasn't saying, he's sitting in the cart. <laughs> he got a glass window in front of him. <laughs> Gotta be safe. And I crush it coming out of the rough. Yeah. I mean, I, you could hear you could hear that click off the head. Mm -hmm. You know, that sound. And I use wood. I came out of the rough with a wood. Mm -hmm. Like a three wood or something. Crushed it. Because, I mean, I could just feel like I could drive the, the, I could put it into it, baby. Don't know where it's going when it gets on there, but it's going. <laughs> it's going. Yeah. And you hear it go, Shoo! And it hits a tree five yards in front of me. It goes shh, backwards into the car. And he, 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 you can hear it. Bing, 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 bing. I mean, it's got so much velocity on it. It's just like a ping pong. I mean, a, a, a pin bomb is in there. Bing, 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 bing. Alan didn't get a hit. We still don't, I mean, God. God protected him. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just bounces all around in the cart. <laughs> the safest place in front of me is probably directly in front of me. Because it's not going there. Hallelujah. Oh my, 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 my. We can live our lives that same way. Pinging all over the place. You know? When the Bible gives us clear instruction on how to live in that vein where we're walking with God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> um, now, if we, if we be dead with Christ, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean this, then we henceforth should no longer be a slave to sin. Sin wants to make a slave out of you. And it, it doesn't. See, this is where some of these narratives came from because there was a desire to help people be free from the condemnation. Okay, I understand that. But get them to the throne of grace where they can get to receive the mercy and, the, and find the grace. And still tell them grace is going to get on no matter what they do. 
Let them come to the place that they will receive the mercy and obtain the and find the grace to what? Get the purging of their conscience so they can serve God with a confident heart. Amen? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died in the sin once, but in that he lives, liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon, consider, count. What? Likewise, reckon ye, all, ye also yourselves to be dead indeed in the sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, or in Jesus Christ our Lord. Reckon, count yourself dead. Count that your body can't tell you what to do anymore. Because I'm in Christ. The power of sin in my body has been what? What has been? Rendered inoperative. Glory to God. It no longer has a controlling power over us unless we let it. Speakers no longer operate unless I deliberately let it. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to turn them off in case up here. <laughs> All right. It's rendered inoperative. And any time we get to the throne of grace, we can, it, 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 we can walk away from there with it rendered inoperative again. When you miss it, God's not angry. I said, God's not angry when you miss it. He's made a provision for you to fix it. So you don't have to grovel in that condemnation. You don't have to grovel in that, that weight of that guilt. You can come. There's mercy. Obtain, I mean, obtain mercy. Find the grace and have your advocate standing right there. Amen. 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 Then he goes on and says in verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you shall obey in the lust thereof, the strong desires. Don't tell this is, sin has strong desires. But don't let, let, keep it rendered inoperative. Amen? Amen. Neither yield ye your members as instruments or weapons. And Martin says weapons of unrighteousness unto sin. Those are weapons that Satan uses in your life to drive you into sin. Amen. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as weapons of righteousness unto God. God wants to, you, wants to drive you into righteousness. Now, you know, I'm just going to not drive you, force you, but you, you walk in righteousness. Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Under the law, sin had dominion. They just, they just couldn't keep it. Amen. Under grace, you can live free from it. Right. Under grace, you can, you, can, you can walk in the fact that it's been rendered inoperative. Yes. Now, if it's rendered inoperative... It doesn't function. If you're counting yourselves dead indeed into sin, doesn't mean I can go live in sin and I'm covered by grace. It means grace has empowered me to render that inoperative and live in righteousness. It's not a matter of I can do the wrong things and get away with it. It's a matter of the wrong things have been rendered inoperative and I can serve God. My, my members are now weapons of righteousness. And I walk with God. It's a matter of how you reckon it, how you count it, and how you live. It's not a matter of what I can get away with. Amen. You shouldn't want to try to get away with it. People do stuff and they feel bad. Okay. And don't take this wrong. Good. Because if it's not godly, if it violates the moral codes of God, if it violates what the word of God says is right and righteous, then you should feel bad. Just long enough. To get to the throne. Amen. 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 I saw it. Just long enough to get to the throne and, and, and let God find that mercy, obtain that mercy, and receive that grace. Amen. And get the cleansing. Hallelujah. Pray. <laughs> let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as, as weapons of unrighteousness unto sin. 
but yield yourselves as those that are alive from the dead and your members as weapons of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? <clears throat> I'm like, did, did, did you people who teach some of this stuff not read Romans 6? I mean, honestly. I've heard some of this stuff. I'm thinking, I'll bet your Bible has Romans 6 cut out. Because there ain't no way on the planet you can read Romans 6 and say what you just said. Shall we, what this, shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Hello. I said God forbid. Margie says certainly not. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey or who, uh, to become sla slaves of. His servants are slaves ye are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, slaves of sin, but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being, made then, being then made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Now this doesn't, you can't pull in and just jump in and pull that out and go, oh, I'm a servant of righteousness no matter what. If you yield yourselves the other way, if you turn the speaker back on, it's going to play. Hello. I speak after the manner of men, or humanly speaking. Men, because of the infirmity or weakness of your flesh, for as they have yielded, submitted, or uh, presented their members' service or slaves to uncleanness and to iniquity. Uh, iniquity, uh, kind of an interesting word there in verse 19, it, it means um, lawlessness. Presented themselves unto lawlessness. Now let me say this. All ye anti-law people, you've taken it too far. We're not under the law, but the law still represents God's code. It's still God's moral code. It just is. Grace did not come to make you so you could live in lawlessness. Jesus did not say this. I didn't come to do it. The law came to fulfill the law. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ who fulfilled the law. He came to empower us to, to walk the way the law demands we walk. Grace is not to empower you to lawlessness. Jude uses a similar term. It says when they entered the end, they, they entered the end. Oh my goodness. All right, guys, listen here. When I finish up, we got to be like, you know, get this thing broke down and packed up, all right? He said, you know, they've entered in and turned the grace of God into licentiousness. That word licentiousness means lasciviousness and it also means lawlessness. They turned the grace of God into lawlessness. The grace of God did not, deter, did not come so you could be unbridled. The Bible even says that the love of God constrains us. Yeah. It came to direct and to channel us out of the ditch, not into the other ditch, but on the road to victory. Amen. 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 Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. And so, goes on here and says, um, nice. Yeah, here we are. So, um, yield your members' service to un un uncleanness and to iniquity, to, unto iniquity or uh, lawlessness. Even so now, yield your members as servants for right. Now, he says, even so now, even though he's already said you're under grace, he said, now yield your members, what? Present your members, servants to righteousness and to holiness. Glory to God. Y'all hear you going home. For what fruit? Had ye then those things wherever you are now ashamed? From the end of those things, for the end of those things is death. They, listen, those things bring to your life the things you look to be free from. And they produce death. Destruction. Misery. Being now, uh, but now being made free from sin and become service to God, 
Ye have to have your fruit unto holiness and everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. So, Paul, this sixth chapter is, is just chock full of stuff. It's not a condemning chapter. It's not, you know, sooner or later, God is going to get you. Sooner or later, he is going to cook you. Or sooner. I mean, it's not going to happen. You know, that's an old uh, grassroots song, I think. You know, love's going to get you. You know, we, we, you know, we keep thinking God's going to get us. God's going to smoke us. God's going to take us out. No! But he says that, that sin, not because he's angry, but it separates you from your position. What? Because he's like, do you remember Jesus told a, par a, a parable about the prodigal son? Yes. Where was the father? Watching for him every day to come home. Yes. Waiting for him. And the minute he came walking down that path, he ran out and greeted him and kissed him and put a robe on his back, killed the fatted calf and had a, had a great feast. <laughs> God's always waiting and already has the answer. The feast. Amen? The victory party. Amen. For when you come to the throne of grace. Amen. It's always there. Your advocate's always arguing. He's always praying. He's praying for you. Who make an intercession for us. Amen. According to the will of, the, of God. He's praying for you. What's he praying? When you sin, he's praying that you come to the throne of grace. Because he knows that condemnation in your heart is going to separate you, push you away. You're going to push away because you feel bad. God's saying, I know you feel bad, but come here. There's grace and there's mercy right here. Come on. Not angry. Jesus is arguing your case. That blood right here, it purges your conscience. You can come and have that washed and then stand with confidence and stand in victory. Amen. Amen. So the third thing to do when your faith seems weak and your victory lost is to make sure you're not living in sin. And if you are, if you have been, go to the throne of grace and get it cleansed. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for our time together. We trust the Spirit of God has ministered to people here and those watching by, on the Internet. We thank you in the name of Jesus that there is great victory wrought and great victory brought into the lives of people through the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. We, we love you. If you've been with us today, thank you for joining us. And until we meet again, remember that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you need prayer, you can email us uh, at uh, office at fbc.org. And um, you can contact us that, that means also. And we'll get back to you, praise God, and let you know the good things about a new life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Until we meet again, we'll see you. God bless you. Praise the Lord.